seriousness, but I'm sure there has to be a lighter side. Oh, yeah, you get somebody trained down, they fart. It's really embarrassing as hell. It's <laughs> not so much for me, but for the person chained down, you really pick on them afterwards. It kind of changes the mood to what you're going to do because you just start to pick on them then, you know. That's when you get out the cork and, hey, guess what I'm going to do? <laughs> but you talk about some of those some of those lighter aspects. I mean, what other, what other things kind of come to mind? Oh, I, I had one submissive one time. She wanted to mess with me. And y you got to have fun. I mean, yeah, th this is a lot of things we do are serious, but you got to enjoy it. You got to laugh. So she really perturbed me. She dug out a magnifying glass. Okay, yeah, is that all you got? It's, it wasn't you. What about the bet you made? What bet? With the one submissive that had what she wanted. Oh, God. Yes. Sounds like a good one. Uh, I'm, I'm a dominant, and basically dominants don't do certain things. So I made a bet. I don't even remember what the bet was about. All I know is I lost, and the bet was is that she could do anything she wanted to me. One thing, if I lost, I lost. She shaved all my pubic hair off. Boy, did I itch. Uh, you know, is you, a person who isn't in this lifestyle doesn't really understand how hard that is for somebody like me to be that vulnerable to, oh. <laughs> I'm glad everybody's enjoying that one. <laughs> yeah, this is the first time anybody's ever taken a raise to that spot. <laughs> Yeah, th that, was, that was always good. That's one, uh, she did, uh, my wife, oh, no, what was really funny is that the, the kids really, they, they at, at one point, they really didn't understand a whole lot about this lifestyle, especially when I first met my future wife, is that uh, they had, I had just moved back up here, and she came up with one son for a visit, and she was, we were out in the kitchen sitting at the table, the, the boy and I, and she was kind of on the floor. And she made the comment that, uh, well, it kind of looks like a puppy, doesn't she? And Trevor goes, the boy goes, yeah. So, so me being the devious little person I am, you want to see her do some puppy tricks? And being the good submissive she is, she's going to do them. So I had her rolling around, begging, and doing all sorts of little puppy tricks. The boy got the biggest kick out of that. That was before he understood about the lifestyle. He thought we were just playing games. So we, you see, you can live this life, and not everybody can know what actually is going on. And he thought she was just playing along with it. And she's just dying. <laughs> and I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was funny. We talked to him before about some of the, you know, historical. And you said there was a one group that went back to the 20s. Yeah. Did they have, like, the same equipment, or has the equipment changed over time? Uh, well, considering with everything, there's uh, a lot of changes in the equipment. I, I'm pretty much old school on mine. I like the old stuff that I actually have to provide all the energy to have them work. But nowadays, you know, they got, uh, you use TENS units, you use violent wands, you use all sorts of things that have electricity involved in them. Um, the trick is, is that you, you don't use things with electricity that is going to really hurt somebody, just enough to tingle them. Like a TENS unit, that's what, that's what therapists use for muscles. But putting them in the right places creates a whole different sensation. It, uh, or a violent wand, it's just like a little, it's like a static, uh, like static electricity when you touch a doorknob after dragging your feet on carpet. 
but you do that at different spots. So electricity has, electricity and motors have entered into it a whole lot more than what uh, it was in the 20s. Uh, I'm more old school. I like the ploggers and the crops and the, the stocks and the wooden devices you can use. Uh, a lot of people like the more modern things. I'm just, I'm just old, so I, you know, I, I resist change. We've talked before about, you know, you're in one version. How many different versions of this whole umbrella that they put this under is there? I honestly can't tell you. It's almost like everybody can have their own philosophy. Some people listen to me and they, they agree with my philosophy. Other people practice safe, sane, and consensual plus rack, which is risk awareness, consensual kink, which I think is a big crock again, just like SSC, but, but that's their choice. That's what suits them. Uh, not it, you know, everybody has their own beliefs about it, and that's supposed to be what the biggest thing about this lifestyle, the one thing that should have in common with all the different ways people practice it, is the acceptance for what somebody else believes. Uh, even though I think something is a crock, it works for them, I won't hold that against them. You know, they're good people, they practice something differently than I do, and good for them. Uh, there's also, there's DS, there's BDSM, there's people that practice what's called Korean. Um, which is based on, uh, bas basically based on books. Norman. 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 By John Norman. Uh, and they try to incorporate that into their lives. Uh, Lord Ivan and myself, we consider ourselves kind of a hybrid. We are more old school with the more uh, structured environment which incorporates as much as we can from every other branch um, and still being true to our own beliefs. But there's a lot of people that have, it's almost each individual has their own portion that they really want to believe in the most. But the DS, the BDSM, and the Gurian are probably the three biggest portions of this lifestyle. Although everything else is more of an offshoot of those three.